Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here once again on day 533 of doing these lives. I'm very excited to be here to speak with you guys as we're winding down in this book, How to Create Strong Families. So if you guys have not been following me, I'm going to encourage you to, to take a couple of steps back just to listen to some of the lives that I've actually presented. I wanted you guys to know that this particular platform is a new platform. So I was recently on my personal page and I've come over to my fan page. So for those of you that uh, send out a like my page, thank you so much for joining me. I do pray that this journey for you is going to be something that's rewarding. I typically like to make sure that quality is delivered and not quantity. So whatever it is that you may be going through, just understand that my holistic practice is typically not based on the traditional mind, body, soul. A lot of times you'll hear that cliche. Uh, a lot of what I speak on, it comes in uh, conjunction with many things that creates the whole person, right? So when I speak about holistic living, I typically will incorporate how do you engage your spiritual life to allow your mind to function the way that it should, all right? Now the mind, of course, is in mode every day that it's constantly taking in things in, dishing things out, and it's ultimately up to you what actually stays in, right? Remember uh, what how cancer happens when it takes over the body. You want to make sure whatever those things are that you're you're having deposited into your soul are things that are just going to be rewarding, and that you can actually take away, incorporate in your life, and grow from it, right? So you always want to make sure that you're removing those those thoughts in your mind that just does not belong there because then it's going to determine the, the type of life that you're living, the person that you are. So I'm going to encourage you just to stay on track with me as I speak on these lives. There's, you will not know the topic that I speak on. I don't put them out ahead of time, but I will tell you that when God allows, when I allow God to speak through me, typically it's for a time like this and it's for the, the moment for my viewers that may be pertinent at the given time. So when you tune in, a lot of times I'll ask you to share my live because it may not be for you at the time. I don't know when you, if you're attending church service, but you'll understand that there's many times the pastor might be on a particular subject and that may not be for you. It may be for friends that are in your circle that needed to hear that message. So tonight, um, first of all, let me just thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, my name is Donna Sharp and I am with Holistic Wellbeing. And I am a transformational wellness coach. So everything that I speak on, like I said, it's going to shape you in some form. And it may be from a spiritual standpoint, a mental standpoint, a nutritional standpoint, but there's no telling. All right. So whatever piece that you're looking for, I, I guarantee that you will be able to pull something from it. So as we're winding down from this book, I've been speaking from a book uh Three Steps to a Strong Family. It's by Linda and Richard Erie. And they spoke on many aspects of how to create a strong foundation for your children. And if you can remember, if you have been following me, I been I have been speaking on how do you cultivate a lifestyle for your children in a time like this? How do you have those conversations with them that maybe you neglected when they were younger, that they need to take into their adulthood, right? So it's it's never too late. Uh, many times when I speak from the children's standpoint, it may be from a very small child to an adolescent to an adult child that you may have, okay? It doesn't matter if you have one or you have 10. The same goes for all, but understand that each of them have different personality. They're gonna function differently. They're gonna do things differently. And overall, as a family, no two families are alike. So that's what we have been speaking from. So we've touched on many different components from this book. And um, if you desire to go back and check some of them out on my personal page, all of them are titled. So you can actually go back and see, oh, on this week, she spoke about this. Or on this day, she spoke about this. So it's not, not very hard to find. So tonight, what I'm speaking on is three ways. It's called three-way partnership. And it's directly from the book. The attributes that it covers is communication, marriage, and guidance. Communication, marriage, and guidance. And I will tell you, each of the topics that I've been speaking from the past several nights, a couple of weeks now, but the, this particular one, I've been about a week and a half on the different topics. 
the one that is a common theme, the one attribute that's a common theme in all, all of them is communication. Communication is pivotal in any relationship, whether it's a relationship between you and your children, a relationship between you and your boss, a relationship between your wife, a relationship between you and your children. It doesn't matter. Communication is so necessary, right? Communication is necessary when you're on the road. What happens if there's no street sign and nothing to guide you to your next street, your next destination? How are you going to get there? So communication is very, very important. And the common theme that I have been seeing, if, you're, if you've been following me, is that communication is one of the number one attributes. And the other two is marriage and guidance. So raising children is an important and difficult business, uh, important and difficult enough to parent, to, that parents need all the help that they can get. We actually did several lives on talking about, you know, how to cultivate that relationship. And it was all apart from this book and prior lives that I've spoke on. So it's not an easy feat. I, I know I mentioned to you guys that you people often come out wondering, how do I get a book on this? This has got to be an easier way, right? So there is no book. There's no perfect way to do it. But if you allow faith and guidance to, to take you through, you'll notice that you'll typically do all the right things that you're supposed to do. And just a tad bit of common sense, right? So to those of you who believe in God or a higher power, it is logical to believe that this power also deems the welfare of children to be important. Important enough to give insight and guidance to parents who ask for it. So remember, whatever you ask the Lord for, he's going to grant it to you. And if you feel that you don't have that what we call in Jamaica sustenance, right? To take you through and teach this child all the proper etiquettes, the proper values, then you can always ask God to guide you down this path. And you'll find out that typically, he'll be right on time to teach you exactly what it is that you may feel that you're missing in a particular stage of you and your child's life, right? So children are complex and have needs beyond the comprehension of even the most observant and analytical parent. Those who believe in God, it is interesting that so many who do call him father generally believe that he knows our children better than we do. If God knows every single hair on our head, don't you think that he's going to understand how to guide us to teach our children the basic necessities of life, the basic values of life, right? So never doubt him because he's going to steer you correctly. It is extremely helpful to think of child rearing as partnership and enterprise and partnership between earthly and heavenly parents wherein the former can seek receive help from the latter so we're going to put in our piece as it pertains to being parents but of course god knows best because guess what he knew about our children and he knew about us way before the time even took place way before conception right so it's nice to be able to lean on him so that he can guide us through so we like, we like most parents pray for or about our children. In our case, we try to pray together at night before going to bed. The usual pattern is that one or the other of us says a prayer out loud, a sponta spontaneous one in our own words. So this particular person is Richard and he's the husband, he's a spouse speaking from a standpoint of a parent. And typically throughout the whole book, just so you know, there's uh, Richard and Linda Linda is the wife, and then their children normally share their story as to their takeaway based on a particular subject that I'm speaking on. So for a while there, I was speaking on traditions and how to uh, cultivate nice traditions in your family because what your children ends up doing is they take away these wonderful traditions that you've had and they bring it into their own families, right? So by making sure that you have the nice practice down pack with your own family, you'll notice that they're taking on some things that you did. Now, they're not going to do it exactly the same way you did it as parents. They're going to spike it up a little bit and change it, which is perfectly fine because remember, no two family are the same. So what Richard said is one night several years ago, Linda prayed and left out a couple of things I was worried about. So I said an additional prayer. She says she learned some things about what was on my mind by what I said in my prayer and why didn't we each pray in turns each night? This has evolved to where one of us starts the prayer and when finished, instead of closing, squeezes the other hand and the other continues, continues the same prayer and then it closes. It has given us the feeling of three-way partnership. 
the two of us praying together to man to a manager managing partner who can help us to go beyond our own capacities because obviously guys if you're praying you are in agreement because you know where there's two three or more gathered the the prayer is powerful so but there are times when you're praying and you're thanking the lord for what the person's saying but you know that there's things that you want to make sure that you ask god for and that's what he's referring to here so they decided to make sure that they allow the next person to pick up where they left off and then someone to close it so everyone has their sheer part in the family so for those of you um, whom prayer has less appeal meditation quiet sober contemplation both individually as a couple as well as spoken spontaneous sharing of their concerns can have some of the same results all right that's pretty neat. So now I'm going to share a little bit about what Linda says, and then we're going to close. Uh, this is Linda, the spouse, and she says, I had the privilege of hearing Mrs. Norman Vincent Pearl speak at an American Mother's Convention at the, the Waldorf Astoria in New York when our children were young. Much of what she said is now forgotten, but one example she gave has become a part of the fabric of our household. She said that when her children were small, she and her husband, when he was there, had a brief meeting with them just before they left for school. They read a short passage of inspiration together, sometimes just one verse from the Bible. Next, they talked together about their challenges for, for the day. Sometimes the child had a, a test or a parent had an important presentation. A family prayer ended this 10 minutes meeting that specifically asked for help for each person with a special need. So as you can see, it's not just the parents that are getting blessed here, but the children who have something that may be current and in the near future. So she said that sometimes they even synchronize your watches so that at the time a, few uh, at the time a child was due to give a talk in a class or take a test, they could each say a prayer for each other at the very moment. After picking this up and doing it, our family, even our children who are living overseas or at college knows they are getting a little extra help from home as they mention in their letters specific dates and times of events important in their lives. There is not a better way to bring family unity and help, help kids feel they are involved with and in tune with helping each other. So... You know you guys have heard this before. The family that prays together, prays together, stays together. It's kind of like when I did the live on families that dine together, having a meal together. So many times that's often ignored, neglected, and we don't realize the big impact that it has. So the power of prayer is extremely strong. So get in the habit of getting out, reaching out to your children drawing them in because I will tell you that there is no time than the present that's going to be so pivotal right now. So pull them in, get them in the habit of creating customs in your family. And remember what you're doing is basically uh, leaving a representation for them, a mark on their lives because you're not going to be here for long and they're going to pull that legacy and take it along. So remember the title of this section was three-way partnership, three-way partnership. And in this case, they spoke about the prayer and the unity that they had as a family and the ability to be able to communicate, work together and draw it and bridge the gap all together. Right. Also covers the attributes of communication, marriage and guidance. So try this. See what helps. Uh, I wanted to make sure I share that with you tonight. And again, like I said, we're quickly winding down to the end. Um, it's been a great journey going through this book. Uh, they had some great topics in there that I felt that was influential and is able to add some great nuggets to your pockets so remember feel free to always take notes and uh write you know your point of views down how this matches exactly what you're going through because again everyone's different right so i wanted to share that with you if this was of value to you i'm going to ask that you share it with your loved ones and friends in your close circle if you also love the live i'm going to ask you to stick your finger on that thumbs up button slide up and you'll see the love button I don't care for the, the thumb. I think thumb is so dry. A lot of times we don't know how to communicate with each other properly, right? So I'm going to ask you to give me a love button. 
Um, but aside from that, if you'd like to learn more about myself, I am a holistic and wellness life coach. Love teaching individuals how to cultivate a better nutritional balance, a better physical balance, and most of all, just teaching you some of the basics of how to use your mind. So many people have their minds and they're not using nowhere near the full capacity of their brain. All right. So if you'd like to learn more about me, log on to holisticwellbeing.com. That's spelled with a W, W H O L E L I S T I C, wellbeing.com. And there you can find out why I'm so passionate about what I do. Click on that about section, it'll give you a brief biography on myself, and you'll get to learn a little bit more about me. All right. Until tomorrow, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for all your support. I am so appreciative and I'll be back again here tomorrow to speak with you from the same book on another great topic. So have a fantastic rest of your evening and take care. Ciao.